In a previous video, we had a bit of a look at the pH scale, started to introduce some of the reasons why this is such an important tool for chemists. The thing that I want to just draw your attention to before we um, slip past this particular one is the fact that as the scale, as we move up or down through the scale, the changes that we see are changing by a factor of 10. So this is not a numerical scale, this is actually a logarithmic scale, where each single number change on the pH scale actually represent a change in the concentration of the ions of a factor of 10. Now if we're looking at the concentration of the hydrogen ions, then we can relate the concentration directly to the pH through a mathematical formula. And this is something that we're going to be looking at in a little bit more detail. But the only other thing that I want to, I guess, look at at this stage is this value of pH 7. And this is the value that we have for neutral solutions, solutions where there is an equal number of hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. In order to understand that, we need to have a little bit more look at water in particular and also the pH calculation. So let's just briefly look at water. Water itself is capable of behaving as a Bronsted Lowry acid and base. Water molecules can both donate and accept a proton from one another. When this happens, and we'll draw it as an equilibrium, the proton may go from one water molecule to another. As it does that, the one that it leaves behind becomes a hydroxide, and the one that it uh, ends up with becomes the hydronium ion. And it's actually more accurate to think of the um, pH scale as actually working on the calcula of the concentration of these hydronium ions. So when you see H+, plus, um, you can actually think in water, this actually manifests itself as the hydronium ion, as an H3O+. Plus. At 25 degrees, the concentration of the hydrogen ions is equal to the concentration of the hydroxide ions. So you can see to whatever degree this occurs, because the ratio is 1 to 1 to 1 to 1, the proportion of each of these in pure water is going to be the same. They're going to have a 1 to 1 ratio. Our pH calculation as we said previously is a log scale. Therefore, if we convert the concentration through a calculation based on log 10, we can get a, a value for the pH. And this is how we get our pH of 7 for a neutral solution. The concentration of the hydrogen ions is equal to the concentration of the hydroxide ions, and they're both equal to 10 to the minus 7. The reverse, of course, of the pH equation is that we can find the concentration of the um, hydrogen ions by um, making that moving the negative sign to the other side and then inverting a log which means raising something to the power of 10 so it becomes 10 to the power of minus pH so this is an alternate way of looking at this particular equation just to give you a bit of a way of converting between either a known pH and an unknown concentration or a known concentration and an unknown pH to go with our pH, we have another concept called pOH. I hope it should be relatively obvious to you that if we're looking at a pH calculation that's based on a log scale and related to the concentration of hydrogen or hydronium ions in solution, that a pOH would be related to the concentration of hydroxide ions in solution. And as before, when we said that for pure water, the pH of 7, the concentration of the hydrogen ions is the same for um, the concentration of hydroxide ions in pure water, so therefore the pOH will also be 7, 7 and 7 are 14. As we look at different examples, we'll see that as we add acids, the pH is actually going to go down as the concentration of hydrogen ions goes up, but this is also going to mean that the pOH is going to um, 
go up. So we want to have a look at um, how each of these things is going to work in practice um, by looking at some specific examples.